building a wood airplane is a great choice even today. There are many species of wood that can be used in aircraft construction, Sitka spruce being the number one choice. But it's becoming harder to find in aircraft quality, which makes it expensive. It can be substituted with Douglas fir, western hemlock, and northern white pine. Let's take a quick look at grading wood. These are only a few of the major parameters to be followed. It will help you identify potential boards at the yard that might pass all the criteria for aircraft use. When choosing a piece of wood for your aircraft project, start with how many annual rings per inch. Your research will define the minimums for that species of wood that you're grading. Remember, these are minimums. More rings per inch is much better. Less rings per inch means fast growth over a short period of time. Great for the lumber company who wants bigger trees in a shorter period of time, but not so good for strength in your aircraft. T want to start a never-ending discussion? Just walk into any hangar and ask, what glue is best? And you'd better find a chair, it's going to take a while. Let's start right off and eliminate the ones you do not want to consider. Now these are great glues and adhesives. They're available and advertised to the general public as being the greatest ever. If you're building furniture, a house, or a bird feeder, they are fantastic advancements in the field of adhesives. However, they do not belong in your airplane, period. Here are a few glue joints on a completed wood airframe that sat for seven years protected in a hangar. This airframe never flew, but every glue joint and lamination came apart just from sitting there. Laminating wood to create forms like bulkheads, cantilever spars, and even longerons can be easily accomplished. The process involves jigs, even pressure along the joint with proper wood grain alignment. All surfaces must be even and flat. Structural adhesives work best when the fibers of each piece are close together. Don't expect the adhesive to fill voids along the joint and still maintain its strength. When laminating wood, you also want to glue grain to grain. This will provide the best strength for a laminate. The question was asked earlier, why can't you stack vertical grain pieces of wood and glue it into a spar or beam? It can be done, but it will not offer the strength that you would expect. Any wood aircraft structure will require some plywood. Some designs only call for small gussets at glue joints while others use ply to cover the entire structure. But the practice of gluing it into place is still the same. Now before we go any further, we're talking about aircraft plywood. It is specifically manufactured for aircraft, but is also used extensively in furniture, cabinets, and boat building. It's readily available at a reasonable cost considering the quality and its expected strength. High quality multiple wood veneers are glued together with a process to provide high shear strength. Now if you're working from a good set of plans, the grain orientation should be noted in each area or situation. When gluing ply into place, even pressure is mandatory. This will allow transfer of loads from one wood member to another and not create a weak spot. Even pressure can be accomplished with weights, staples, or aircraft nails. 